Um, Colin Souza, thank you very much uh, for, for, for joining me today. I've been photographing your work for probably, well, maybe two, three years, mainly around kind of Shoreditch, Camden, um, and, and, and I just really like your style, particularly, I think when I think about your work, I think of the colour scheme, black, gold, and red are the kind of three colours which are kind of, which, which spring to mind most immediately when I think about your work, really. Um, and um, yeah, I'm just grateful to, for, to you for, 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 for sparing the time, really, I guess. Thank you, Sam, that's lovely. <laughs> Thank you. I, you know what? It's, it's, it's just nice to be appreciated for what I do. So I know that you come from uh, Manchester, right? Yeah. And, and every now and again, you're in London. So I'm, I'm glad that I could have things on the street that you appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. And, and, and I think, you know, you know, I'm a fan of hip hop myself and, and some grime music as well. And some of your works there, you know, you've done, uh, you know, the Lords of the Mic, I think you did in Camden, which was a great piece. Um, right. Yes. Grime, grime lords. Yes. <laughs> grime, grime lords. Um, which, and, and is that something, you know, kind of, you know, you've done quite a few kind of um, music, hip hop, grime inspired pieces. Is that something, you know, that, that, that kind of influences you quite a lot then in your work? Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I have a soundtrack to my life, really. So even if I'm not listening to music, I can hear it in my head. <laughs> so I literally walk down the street or I'm driving with a soundtrack to my life, which is mainly in hip hop. Um, so I, I more than likely will be doing more music related pieces on the street as time goes on. I did have, um, I was supposed to do one this year. I won't say what it was, because hopefully I can get to do that next year. But um, I mean, with the, with the um, I think the first, the first one that I did was actually Tupac in as, no. It was the um, the one in Dalston, Hip Hop Raised Me, and I did two pack around the corner, so we kind of classed that as one. Um, so, I mean, that war was inspired by my youth. So I consider myself hip hop. I grew up on hip hop. Um, I think the first record that I bought was um, Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick, the show. I, I say record, it was a cassette tape. <laughs> it, was a, it was a cassette tape when I bought it. Um, or actually, I may have had salt and pepper. Well, either way, I was a child that was fascinated with the hip hop culture. And I, I remember in the early 80s, uh, American, American people would come here and they would um, perform. So at the time, that actually included like um, skateboard ramps and um, double dutch and you know, break in and DJ. So it was just really, really cool to be able to witness as like a five-year-old child, you know, and it always it always stayed with me. I just I just love hip hop. Not so much what, what hip hop is now. Because <laughs> of course I'm of that older age where I can say, Well, I was there at such and such a time when it was great. Golden I don't age. know what they're doing right now, but it's okay. It just doesn't resonate with me, but it resonates with the um, you know. The younger people yeah but um i think that the next wall that i did was the um grime lords in camden and that was really um so while i was in dalston doing the, the hip hop raise me wall i had a lot of I had a lot of people or younger people ask for like british hip hop artists or um african African artists. So I was explaining that this is about my youth. <laughs> this is about when I grew up, but I do have a, um, a Grime Lords or It wasn't Grime Lords at the time, it was just like some Grime artists kind of grew, as so did the hip hop one. It just grew and grew and grew. So the Grime Lords grew. It grew to, um, so that I was able to depict more than just the original four that I wanted to. But at the time, like when, when Grime was growing, I had, um, what year was this? 2003, or was it 2004? 2003, 2004. I had, um, I had a shop, I had a shop in um, Stratford before, Stratford is what it is today. Um, and I used to customize t-shirts and clothes and stuff in there. And a lot of, um, a lot of Grime artists would come in and get their things customized. So I met quite a few back in the day. So, 
<laughs> I had more of a connection with the grime, the grime wall as well. Mm. So you know, any 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 kind of music related thing that you'll see me do, especially if I use the colours, the the golden colours, then that will be a personal connection from mm. my youth. And and have you? Um, I know you, that you know you've got a great photo from a couple of years ago where you met Slick Rick for for, for one, which is you know quite something. Has, has you know have you met a few of your Idols, I guess, really through through this. Um, so I, unfortunately, my memory is so bad. So I think I've only embarrassed myself to say no. <laughs> well, I did. I I was fortunate to meet Karis one. Wow. So the, the hip hop, the hip hop wall. Um, well, Karis one, he was actually doing a lecture uh, around the corner, and I went and I met his son. I met his son and we was having a conversation like and as soon as as soon as KRS one came up, they was like, This is Carly and she painted the wall and it's literally a five minute walk. You know when things just align yeah, yeah. and it just works out. So he, <laughs> this is where KRS one is, is wrong for this still. <laughs> but he was already late. <laughs> but he was like, Okay, let let's let's go check out your wall. <laughs> wow. So we went and we checked out the wall and um, we had great conversation and we met up the next day and you know had more great conversation about hip hop because I'm you know I'm, I'm a hip hop geek up until up until like 1999 and then after that yeah <laughs> my knowledge kind of changed a bit <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, there was a bit of a there was a bit of a lull as well I think for a few years when everything went a bit too bling and all the rest of it. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't really suit me, but I was also heavily into jungle and garage as well. <laughs> so I, I had I had other distractions. But yeah, the hip hop changed a bit, didn't it? It 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 changed a bit, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with change, but I think a lot of diversity was lost in the direction that it started to go, which you know didn't align with my soul. <laughs> Although I could party to a bit of the bling and you know, all of that stuff, but I'm a public enemy fan, mm. you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, everybody that was on the wall, I was huge fans of them at one time or another. And I still, I still prefer the music that I was heavily into as a child that's being created now that I'm, I'm an adult. It's very strange, isn't it? <laughs> And so well, maybe, maybe it's nostalgia attached to it. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But um, I think I don't know. There's some good. There's some good stuff coming out now. I think if you've got to you've got to find it a bit. I think. But uh, I, mumble mm. rap. Okay. But we digress anyway. <laughs> um, but getting very hip hop orientated. Hip -hop, yeah. Art, but um, you know, it is hip -hop, the culture. Yeah. Well, then you know, hip hop. Graffiti obviously is, is is one of the elements there. So did you kind of you know did you come into it from more the graffiti side or you know or would you have started more on the street art side so to speak? Yeah, I definitely um, didn't come into it from the graffiti side. Although you know all of my life I've enjoyed graffiti, but um, I never I never got into writing. I never got into writing and I, I only took to the streets five years ago. Although I've done little bits and pieces through, you know, throughout time, maybe over the last 10 years, but five years ago, I, I decided it was time to, you know, to do this properly, put your all into it and get as good as you think that you can get, you know, because that's what stopped me in the first place for a while. I, I, I've been airbrushing for 20 years. So, I knew that I was better at airbrushing than I was at being an aerosol um, art, spray artist. And I didn't really want to show that. I think the ego was saying that. No, no, we, won't, we won't show that you're not that good yet. But I didn't know how good I was because I just hadn't done it. <laughs> but 2015, I decided I'm going to do this. And it's what I decided to do. Yeah. Was there any element of uh, apprehension in a way? Because I suppose, you know, the first thing when you put your stuff out there for everybody to see, anybody who's working, walking past, and you can get that instant feedback now, especially with, you know, Instagram, how popular that's been. It's generally yeah. a pretty positive space, but were you, you know, was there any apprehension or were you kind of like quite into it and confident with what you're putting out there, you know, from day one? Um, yeah, I, I think that the apprehension was like what basically stifled me and stopped me from even doing it. 
And then, you know, I got to a point where I was just like, I really want to do this and it's, I'm going to have to go out on the streets and just do it. I'm just going to have to do it and then see how it goes and then just continue. And if it's, if it's not that great, then you just continue and continue and, and get better. Because, I mean, if you look at what I was producing five years ago, it's not as good as what I'm producing now. Um, luckily, it wasn't awful. <laughs> um, it was received very well from the beginning, you know, so maybe that helped me go on but I was I was doing this anyway I'd already decided yeah so I I wouldn't say once I started maybe the first painting before getting there that was you know that was a bit nerve-wracking because I was like okay I'm gonna have to go to Leak Street and I was thinking if I go in the middle of the night and I do it and there won't be people watching and I could just get on with it and then people were saying that you could get robbed at that time of night in Leak Street so best not to and then I went in the morning and I did it and it was it was fun and I haven't turned back since so um, well, no Leak Street's an interesting one because it's a great spot but Pieces don't last very long there at all. Do you, you know, when you put something up, are you, do you, are you kind of choosy about where you put them now? Because sometimes, you know, you might put a lot of work into it and somewhere like Leak Street, for example, you get some amazing stuff there, but it can go in a day, can't it? You know? Yeah. I mean, it all, it all depends on what your agenda is. So for me, if I do something in Leak Street, it might be, um, well, first of all, if I do something in Leak Street, I don't expect it to last even for the full day. Right. Like if, 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 if people got down there in the morning and still dead, then well done. Because <laughs> you really don't expect it to last. But I, I think that this is a part of the game. This is, it is what it is. It's street art. And there's so many of us artists that want to paint it out on the street. And there's only so many free legal spots so of course it's going to get done over very quickly and and i think that anyone who is precious about that shouldn't really paint there if they want something to last so if um paintings that i expect to last like for example i would never have painted um ty's mural in leak street or i you know because i know that it wouldn't it wouldn't last it's not the place for it. So there's there's many commissions that you can get in different places where, you know, if you're commissioned by somebody who owns a building or whatever, then at least you know that they will protect it because <laughs> they paid for it, you know? Yeah. And is that, yeah. I mean, the, and, 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 the, and the time mural as well, you know, especially poignant because he, you know, sadly passed away because of coronavirus and one was, one of the great voices of of, of UK hip hop for a start, and two seemed well, from, at least from what I can understand, was a real kind of proper community figure and was really well liked as well. So, you know, what was it like creating that creating that piece for you? Um, so when, when when I paint, I pretty much get into a zone, and the zone is like you know get the artwork done um communicate with whoever's curious about whatever but i don't actually really look at the piece until like i look at the photographs so on on the day it was over two days that i painted it so the first day that i painted it i was i was pretty much there with um boyd um solo solo one who um who runs the gym and the bookstore. So we, we were there the first day and, um, and Ben, who also um, runs the Brixton gym, he was filming us and um, I'm glad that it was only the second day that, that I had company there because I talk a lot and I get caught up in a lot of conversations. So, um, it was just about the right amount of time that I was able to get his face done on the first day and then the second day was everything else. So people would witness me brain all the hearts and, and stuff like that. But it wasn't, it really wasn't until like, like I said, I'm just in Carly mode and I'm, and I'm, I'm pretty much painting and, and, and connecting with people. 
and then I saw the videos and then I was getting, you know, all of these beautiful messages of, you know, thanks and appreciation. And it kind of hit me. It kind of hit me after, <laughs> you know, just, yeah. just watching it that actually, the, you know, next year, so the bridge event that where I know Ty from, um, that would have been in, in August this year. But next year, I'm sure that, you know, hopefully things are back together. To, mm. normal, to normal enough that we'd be, you know, apart, be able to do those kind of things. Ty won't be there. And Ty was actually quite a very important element to the, the bridge because he was one of the, he did the second half of um, MC in the night, comparing the night. So basically Ty was the vibes man. Mm. He'd have children dancing, people that were shy dancing, you know, it's, um, yeah, he won't he won't be there with us next year and that I realise now. I'm kind of glad that it wasn't in my head like that on the day, you know. Otherwise I wouldn't have been able to communicate so well, maybe. I d I don't mm. But it's sad. It's 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 very sad. But I, I did like, you know, with this job you get to meet a lot of people and you get to connect with a lot of people, so um, I connected with a lot of um, Thai's people. Mm. Mm. And I suppose that's the beauty of street art as well, is actually, you know, being able to put something there that becomes a focal point and then you get that connection as well. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know so many people were going to turn up on the, on the Sunday, but then, you know, it, it makes sense that so many people turned up because it was in Brixton and family and friends are all locals, you know. And big shout out to the... Um, to the Hanson family who, you know, was playing the music on a day and actually um, put it out there to let people know that I would be painting down there. We're going to have a look by so people want to pass by and people pass by a lot more than I guess was expected. And that was, you know, when <laughs> social distancing was um, made. So, um, it went out the window. It, it went completely out the window. And it wasn't until the next day when I saw the, the picture of like 30 of us in front of the, in front of the mural. Um, it, was, it, was, it was such a weird thing because we, um, we've, not been, we've not been programmed long enough to social distance no. naturally. No. You know? So even people that, you know, turned up and had masks on and gloves on and stuff, by the time we turn around, they're hugging people. What are you gonna do with humans? Yeah, we're humans. This social distancing thing is, is I feel like they're gonna, it's gonna be a hoax. <laughs> like, mm. They're gonna be forced into a position where they say, oh, actually, we made a huge, huge, huge mistake and uh, we were wrong. Um, sorry, sorry about the last couple of months and sorry for those who lost their business. Sorry, I'm going off a track. Let's, let's, oh, let's, no. let's well, I mean, <laughs> you know, there, there, you know. Ultimately, we're only human, aren't we? And when it comes to something like that, we're naturally, you know, you want, you want to be close to people to kind of share this experience, whether it's a good experience or a bad experience, or just to kind of share in that moment. So it's only natural, isn't it? You know, and it's not like you know, all the rest of the time we're, you know, we're sticking to it as best as best we can, aren't we? So um, yeah, um, yeah. It's just a strange. It's a very very strange time. It's, you yeah. know sad for all, all, all of the families and you know people that have lost people to this COVID-19 it's it's really sad actually. You're still managing to get out there and and, and do some walls at the moment is that is that you know did, did you sort of keep it fairly low-key for up until fairly recently then? Um well, I was painting. I, I guess what, I, what I've been doing is I've been sharing what I was painting during lockdown time. So, you know, during lockdown, I was fortunate to still be getting um, jobs. But I, I didn't think it necessary for me to be posting um, online. So now, so now I'm posting like things that I've recently done and things, things that I've done for the last couple of months, really. Yeah. Mm. Um, and a lot of businesses have their shops closed. They, you know, so whilst they're closed, people are coming up with no, new ideas like, ah, you know what, maybe a makeover. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where us artists come in, you know, to, to, to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for that, it's good to 
it's good to basically build relationships with people from before so that in times in times of need when you know you you may be low on work that people may think of you for yeah. you know their personal artist that actually i've got a good rapport with carly quite yeah. like her let's see how she's doing right now we can offer her some work if she needs it yeah so that's that's that's, that's literally the position that i found myself in that um, yeah people people remembered me <laughs> yeah, no, it's good and i feel it's a good principle in general just to kind of put something positive out there and then hopefully you know something positive reflects back in you know however what whatever time it, whatever time it might take really um and um which which brings me on to um the the womb collective in your in your in your work there and just explain a little bit kind of if you could sort of encapsulate the work that you're doing there and and what you're kind yeah. of to achieve okay um so the womb collective um you know w-o-m is woman womb it's you know it's all feminine and we are we're a collective of street artists right now, but you know, in the future, we want to expand just to all, all artists. So it's a network, it's a network of empowerment and help each other build, um, connect. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of us on different levels of, um, you know, how long we've been doing this, how, you know. So we're the greatest support system to each other. And every now and again, we'll have something that you know brings us together. So we started, we started at the beginning of the year. We started at the beginning of the year with actually it started last year. Last year, around this time, summer, um, one had their first um, first jam. So I mean, basically, it was an impromptu jam by um, Elno, who um, just wanted to get some ladies down to Allen Gardens and paint. And then after that, I think I didn't, I wasn't able to turn up to that one. But after that, you know, um, the, the idea kind of grew into um, uh, exhibition. So uh, the exhibition it was really Elno's baby. So Elno, Elno, Rocky, and Lurs um, were, were, were building this, and then they asked me to come on board to help with some other things so so now i am fully involved <laughs> in, in in the collective and i am just excited to get as many women on the street as we can um painting because you'll find that a lot of times women tend to be scared like myself i i was not i was scared to hit the streets at first by myself so so now that we have a collective and whenever we, you know, put out there that there's a street jam, it's for anybody, all women to come. And what's funny is how many men want to come. It's, 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 it's like, it's, it's interesting though, but we, we're getting a lot of support from guys though. Mm. We're getting a lot of support from guys, which is, which is very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, because it can be, you know, I've been to a, you know, various street art festivals and sometimes it, 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 it could be as much as 80% men artists something like that you yeah. know they didn't they, like the, the can, which considering what you know if you think about how many great female artists are out there that's not really mm. properly represented it doesn't reflect in the, yeah it doesn't reflect in the street art culture um but i mean that that is simply because um sometimes it's not even considered a, a, an issue until you say to a guy that you know because I've had a conversation with another street artist actually, and he couldn't understand why the need for a female collective. And you know, I had to ask him like, how many how many street artists females do you know? And he named he named four of us. And I was like, well, there's 20 in the collective, so you know, I could name I can I can keep on going off off of your hands and my hands. How many guy street artists and writers that I know? And then on top of that, when 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 there are when there are jams like you know a few of us women may be invited and that's only because like we're kind of made connected or we're really respected <laughs> Do you know what i mean but uh, uh, a, a guy that's not fully respected he can still get in there a lot easier than the, mm. uh, a, a girl that's not fully respected so you know all we're doing is we're creating the space where women can come and paint and um you know the more you paint the better you get and then once you connect you connect with other 
other female street art is it's not always all of us it could be two go out and do a bit together three go out you know yeah. but it grows and then we inspire those who pass by and they're like i've never seen women painting before and then a number of us we do workshops as well you know so we're we're offering what we've learned to whoever's interested to, to find out. So my, my job as a part of the collective is to bring more awareness to um, female artists. Yeah. And it sounds like you're fostering, a, great a, you know, fostering a really positive uh, kind of atmosphere of cooperation there as well, really. Yeah. Um, and and I, I saw on your Instagram today that, we, that your mural of, uh, is it Nanny, Nanny Maroon, am I right? Nanny. Mm. Yeah, Nanny of the Maroons. Yeah. So um, the exhibition, the online, so we launched our website on Friday and um, we launched it with the exhibition um, honoring black, black heroines. And um, I mean, once again, it's Elno. Elno, <laughs> such a beautiful woman, beautiful soul. She, she, she was like, I have, a, I have an idea, ladies. <laughs> I was about to do my Spanish accent then, but I shouldn't. But, she, you know, she hit us, she hit us up. That was, that's me, Rocky, and, um, and Lua. She hit us up and said that she has an idea that she, you know, she wants to present an um, uh, exhibition honouring honoring black heroines and that it will be open for, for all women to, to participate in. And you know we promoted it on online, and we we had some great entries from people across the water, which is which is which is great because you know it's all about building and connecting. So there's people that are now connected to the one collective um, that didn't know about us before before this. So you know we we, we will keep on doing things to engage and to to connect with more and more artists throughout the world yeah that's that, the plan. That what i loved about you know the nanny of the maroons piece was that you know you have you've, you've done the mural but then you know you've you've got the research and the story behind it and it's kind of you know i read it and i thought okay right i've learned something now and this is you know especially in, you know the all the conversations we're having now kind of post george floyd actually which you know you know, there's a lot of uncomfortable conversations being happening, a lot of kind of completely essential conversations as well, actually. And I guess there's this kind of, you know, kind of go into that, you know, in, into that sort of conversation that's being had, do you feel? I mean, look, it's, it's a conversation that's uncomfortable for some people. Um, but through my art, uh, this, is, this is where I feel blessed as an artist that I can paint something and give you a narrative sometimes or not give you a narrative sometimes. But if I'm painting something, you know, that is for honouring honoring black heroines, I consider Nanny um, a heroine. And unfortunately, it's one of those stories, even though you can, you know, she is printed on the $500 bill, um, Jamaican dollar bill. A lot of people still don't know who she is. It's just the face on that money, you know? But there's a great story. Um, behind, I mean, of course, the story is a lot deeper than what I've written on, on, on Instagram, but hopefully, you know, people will maybe go and find a video to watch the video or the movie or you know but this is this is what we do as artists we're able to put visuals out there and um make something trigger within you that may make you want to read up on that you know but what a great character she was mm. yeah responsible for freeing more than 800 slaves can you imagine the strength of that woman Mm. and the drive <laughs> and she, and she had to she had to be able to like as, as as a leader inspire so many people to get your freedom get your freedom we will help you <laughs> you can come and live here where we have built and you know because this this was going on for over 30 years they kept they kept them out because first they were fighting, first they were fighting with the, um, with the Spaniards and then the English came and wanted what the Spaniards had. So, you know, um, the Spaniards pretty much, they fled and left their weapons and whatnot, didn't they? They left all of their weapons. So 
um, the Africans were able to take those weapons and train themselves, train themselves and become great, great warriors that, you know, the, the Redcoats never conquered. Mm, and it feels so these are stories I never heard of when I was in school. I, 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 this is this is what I've had to find out as an adult, as we do with most with most Black history that's inspiring, that's not connected to sports or music or you know. I mean, you you, you see it though, don't you, Sam? That for 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 Black people, they try and keep our inspiration in this small circle of what entertains white people, which is sports or music or you know actors that that kind of stuff but we're, we're so much more but you know we, we have to educate ourselves so i i've stayed away from a lot of things for a long time but you know now's the time that I'm, i use my art to share to share stuff That's that a, may be a bit more importance i mean it's a it's a powerful thing to be able to do and you know you, I, I was you, you you kind of took the words out of my mouth actually which was that I don't recall learning about this in in school, you know, but it feels like this is something that is quite important. And if, you know, if a story has, you know, more than one side, which of course it does, then, we, you know, we really should be learning, a, you know, learning a bit more about it. So, you know, in you putting this out there, then hopefully that kind of helps, you know, more people just to kind of connect with that and understand a bit more. And, you know, there's that thing, isn't there, that kind of, if you understand where you're coming from, then hopefully you can, you know, understand where you, where, where you might end up, basically. So, um, I, I always try and inspire, you know, people with different cultures to, you know, add something in about your culture. Hmm. You know, that's, that's, that's your gift and you're fortunate to come from a culture that, you know, has something that you can share and show the world. So that's, that's what I do. When people ask, why is your art black? Well, I'm a black woman. What else can I say? <laughs> and you either like it or you don't. You know, it's, it's 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 really that simple. But I'm just I'm just sharing what comes from within. Mm. And 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 is there one piece that you've created over the over the last few years that you would say, you know, either defines you as an artist, or 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 if someone wasn't that familiar with your work and they wanted to a snapshot of what you're about, kind of thing, would there be one piece you'd direct them to, maybe? That's difficult. That's that's difficult because you know the, the the it's the mood and the vibe and whatever whatever it is that I'm painting at the time. So um, I haven't painted Miss Sin on the street much, but Miss Sin is completely different than your Golden Goddess. You know, Miss Sin is a character that always has a slip in his mouth, and the Golden Goddess is a, a character which is you know is golden, um, often has a, a key over the third mm. eye. You know, showing you hope and empowerment. So maybe I would direct people to my hip hop wall online, but not in real life because it's faded. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But that <laughs> that, that 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 piece there, that um, I, I guess that really that really kind of summed up my my hip hop experience. Um, yeah, I was heavily into rap music. It, it, I, I mean, I was obsessed. <laughs> I used I used to watch your MTV Raps. Um, I think it came on every day but Sunday. Um, I would I would make it home. I would make it home from school on time so that I could watch you know Ed Lover and Dr Dre half an hour your MTV Rap show. I I bought all the hip hop magazines. Um, you know I could I could pop and lock a bit. Couldn't I could never break dance. I never quite got into DJing. <laughs> but my hip hop fashion was always on point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my hip hop sense of style was always on point, you know. So I had the sense of style, um, the music collection, um, you know. What can I say? Hip hop. Maybe, maybe that would be the best place to point something. Mm. I, I honestly can't say Sam because I, I speak to so many different people, and different people are connected to different artworks that I do. You know, mm. I, I was surprised when I first started doing this and I had two, two um, elderly, elderly white people um, literally run up on me <laughs> outside Shoreditch um, train station. It was the most bizarre thing, but very flattering as well, because they ran up on me and they pulled out their camera and it was like Carleen de Souza, And they were showing me pictures that they had actually gone around and taken on the street. And then it happened a second time. And I thought, oh, this is a bit weird. 
And then, and then when it happened for the third time, I just thought, you know what, Carly, this is actually what you really wanted. You wanted to be able to, you know, create artwork and, and connect with people, regardless of, you know, age, race, gender. Like, I just want to create artwork that connects. And, and that's really ultimately why why I hit to, I hit the street. Mm. Yeah. And does that give you a bit of a buzz then, where you get that kind of you know reaction, especially not expected reaction as well as the expected maybe? Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm still getting used to the idea that you know somebody that I don't know personally, a stranger, is a fan of of what I do and follows what I do. And you know sometimes we actually meet in person and they share this with me and this is like wow thank you <laughs> thank you for you know receiving what i'm putting out there yeah um now just for fun i've got some i've got some quick fire questions here so uh let's let's, let's do it <laughs> let's let's go okay okay um, sit like I'm ready. right right limber up so uh, question number one uh Spray can or paintbrush? Spray can, 100%. Straight in. Uh, street art or graffiti? Street art. Uh, Only because that's my practice. Fair, fair. Uh, <laughs> wall or canvas? Wall. Can go bigger on walls. Stencil or freehand? Freehand. And finally, home or away in terms of where you like to paint? Home, oh. away. I don't know. <laughs> I almost started singing "Home and Away" the theme tune there. Sorry, I, I think I don't know. I, I don't know. Home or away? Oh, that's the only question you got me stumped on. I don't know. Home and away. Can I merge those? <laughs> okay, okay, you can have that. You can have that. Thank you. Uh, and 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 just finally, I always like to ask, you know, um, are there any artists either who you're really into at the minute, or who you think people should go and check out online or in person? Well, personally, you should definitely check out all of the One Collective. Um, you should also check out my other collective, um, which is Three Other Ladies and um, BBFA Collective. Um, beautiful, beautiful artists. Um, I don't mm, let me think. There's so many artists out there that I, I enjoy. You see, yeah. so I don't even want to just say like one person, but definitely check out all of the collectives that I'm involved with, and all the links off of their links and off of their links. And, you know, <laughs> just just keep just keep on like you see something you like, click on it, have a look at their page. And you know what I think is very good as well. I love um, people like you, Jet and um, Sam, because what you do is you take photographs and you post them on your page. So um, a lot of times, even as artists, there's a lot of artists that we don't know who they are, but you may post something that I think is amazing, and I will click on the link, and that will take me to the to the artist page, and then just like that they have a new band, which is oh, well. Thank you, you know right. so um there's so blah, blah 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 but check out like photographers pages because they do a fantastic job of, um, of promoting us as artists yeah appreciate you no lovely appreciate it. right back at you right back at you um well thank you so much for for sparing the time um for this interview uh really greatly appreciated and hopefully you know, I've taken enough photos of your stuff. I don't know how we've not seen each other in person just once. So, you know. So. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm surprised as well. Like, I, I do meet, I meet a lot of, I meet a lot of you guys. Um, sometimes I've just left, the, I've just left the area. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I've been to you in Camden one time. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure the stars will align next time you're. Yeah. Yeah. And then that I just I just walk around the corner, or you walk around the corner, and there yeah, I am. Yeah. Painting. That that's yeah. literally how it happens. Because I when I first started, I um a lot of photographers that I would meet in my you know give me a shout when you're when you're painting, but I don't, and I I always forget. <laughs> I yeah. always used to forget, and then I think that well, why do I forget? And I I don't really want to like make it exclusive. Like if you walk yeah. around the corner and you catch me, then you you know. I prefer those kind of shots because sometimes yeah. if you if you invite somebody down, they're like, okay, right now, pause for a minute. 
and I'm going to need you to, because because they've got the right in, haven't they? So it's like, can you just pause and it's like, no, mate, just get these natural shots as I'm spraying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the job. Like, I, I will pose though, because I'm a poser. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, um, I like that natural, the natural approach. So sometimes it's nice when you turn around and you catch a, a photographer just like, just finish taking a picture of you. Or sometimes I ruin it. I ruin it when I turn around and do something while like, ah! <laughs> just because there's, just because there's a camera on me. Yeah, keep it natural. Oh, keep it natural. All right, Ricardo, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Sam.